welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith, and in this Kickstarter preview, we're going to be checking out the third entry in the Hunted series. This comes from Gabe Barrett and is published by Best With One Games. Now, if you haven't heard of the Hunted series at all, I recently released an unboxing video of the first two entries in the series. You can go to those videos. I'll put a link in the top right hand corner for you right now. But if you're interested in the Hunted Woad Ridge Kickstarter, which is on Kickstarter as of the release of this video. I'll place a link to that in the video description and pin comment for you. But what you'll find in this video is all around how to set up Woad Ridge, as well as the most updated rule set around the game, and on top of it, a playthrough from start to finish. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the setup. The first step of setup is to place the player board in front of you and then place a single cube on spot number 20 on the bottom left hand corner of the player board. Next we're going to be placing 8 hearts in this area over here. In this prototype it has 10, but as of this most recent edition of the rules, 8 hearts are what is placed here. Step number two is to place the five team cards to the left of the player board so the icons and special abilities are visible. Here are the five team members we have set up. We've got Marty, Celia, Danny, Jayla, and Jack, and they all bring something unique that you'll see as we go through the playthrough. Some of them bring icons we can use to pay for certain costs. Other ones have one-time effects on the bottom. And then, of course, this guy over here, Marty, has four tokens that you need to ensure you have next to you as you'll be able to spend these in place of rolling dice in the future. Step number three is to shuffle the allies, items, the pink trouble deck, the green trouble deck, and the evidence cards and place them within easy reach. Next, place the adventure book somewhere close at hand as you'll be referencing this throughout your gameplay. Next up is the evidence board. Make sure you open it up so you can ensure you see the entire grid laid out in front of you. You'll be placing evidence as you find it in these different slots. Now find all the tokens in the game and keep them in one spot so that you're able to grab them when you need them. From the hunted deck, you're gonna to want to find the neighborhood card and place it just above the player board. This is gonna be the reference as to the starting location of the adventure. Also inside the hunted deck, when you're trying to find the neighborhood card, Look for the clock tower card as well. It's double sided. It has pink on one side, green on the other. We have kind of the real world as it were right now. And then we have the other side, very similar to the Stranger Things mentality. Make sure that you shuffle this entire deck right here and ensure it's on the real world side and then place this clock tower right on top of the deck like so. When we're going through this deck, we'll be drawing from the bottom of the deck. Last but not least, let's get our 10 dice slotted into the left hand section of our player board for use. And just like that, we're all set up and ready to go. I want to make one note around the rolling of the dice because you will see this icon and I don't currently have it changed on this prototype. But every time we see this heart symbol with the minus beside it, it's going to stand for a re-roll icon. And how I'm going to track this as I actually move through the game is every single time I make a roll in the game, if I land this heart icon, then I'm able to tick up how many re-rolls I have. I just can't use that re-roll in the given roll that I'm doing in that moment, but I can use it on a future roll. So those hearts can really help you out down the line. But in the final version, that icon will be different. And that's it. We're ready to jump right into this playthrough. But the first thing I want to make note of is for individuals that have seen a playthrough or seen this game played before, there are some changes and tweaks that have been made available recently that are worth mentioning up front for those people that are familiar with the gameplay to understand why I'm playing it this way. So the first thing is we're starting with eight hearts rather than 10 hearts in terms of our health. You saw that while I was setting up, that is a change. The reroll icon we've already talked about. So anytime we get a heart we're going to get a reroll. Regroup now costs two time instead of one, so it's a little more costly to do that regroup action. And it's going to cost double the icons necessary to defeat green trouble cards when they come out. And of course, if you cannot satisfy those icons, you lose time or HP based on what's on the card for each icon you can't satisfy. They say the town of Woad Ridge has been cursed ever since Amos Woad founded the place way back in the 1800s. The 
The sleepy Colorado tourist trap looks plumb peaceful in its postcards, but there's a darkness about the town you can't quite put your finger on. Some even say the town has an other side where the crazy roams unchecked, but I can't speak much to that, not here anyway. By the 1980s, things had gotten especially weird, at least until a bunch of kids started snooping around trying to get to the bottom of the town's supernatural goings-on. While the adults were worried about their Tupperware parties, these youngsters were out tracking down clues and finding trouble before it found them. And rumor has it they found some kind of creature in the woods a while back which might explain all them FBI fellers around here asking questions. And here they come now, riding around town on their bicycles. I just hope they figure things out soon. Looks like some kind of dark cloud is rolling in right behind them. So now we have a much better understanding of why we have our team here. So as I mentioned before, a number of individuals and of course the newest member, Marty here. But Marty, like I said, has some really interesting abilities here, being able to use these tokens when able in order to help us out. And one of them even allows us to gain health. The other is straight up for symbols. These are all great and I'll show you how they're all put to use as we move into the playthrough. So now that we understand that we're taking on the role of a group of kids in their newfound alien friend as we explore Woad Ridge looking for evidence of the town's supernatural happenings, we also have to be really wary of the darkness and of the other side which we could fall into and have to deal with which will be a lot harsher than our current reality. The other thing to mention is we need to find evidence and we're trying to find evidence to piece together what's going on in this town so we have a chance to actually go up against the boss but there's some things that can prevent that from happening so how does our team lose well if we run out of health that certainly is one of the major ways to lose so if all eight of our health disappear we're done and we lose we cannot gain health beyond the eight we have here so we can't use the ninth and tenth position that was a recent change and again this is a prototype and is subject to changes and we've got this timing mechanism down here it starts at 20 if it goes all the way down past one that's also a loss for us. So how does our team win? Well, we need to find 15 evidence cards that, that are also connected. And this will make a lot more sense when we start placing evidence into this board. But long story short, we have 15 different slots we need to fill in. But it's just not a matter of grabbing evidence cards and dropping them in. There will be icons on these evidence cards on the left and right of them. And when you place an evidence card in a slot, what you then place in the future to the left of it or to the right of it, for example, needs to match icons on that side of the card in order for it to be a fit. We can do things like rest or regroup. These are actions we could take in order to shuffle evidence around, but it's not as easy as just filling in all these evidence pieces and just running towards the monster that we pinpoint. We need to make sure they're connected, and I will talk about that in detail once we start dropping evidence cards in there. The final thing to mention is we are going to be digging into this adventure book when we complete a column of evidence. So as soon as we have one of these columns filled, we're going to look at the cards in the column, look in the bottom right hand corner and add the two numbers up. Say for instance this was a 2 and this was a 2, so it's a 4. And we're currently at the neighborhood location. We would go inside the adventure book, look up neighborhood and find number 4 and read it. And that's it, we're ready to go. Let's talk about the actions we can take on our turn. The first one is pretty simple, draw a card. But when we do it, we draw from the bottom of the deck. Always remember that. So you'll be seeing me doing that a lot through this. The next one we can do is we can hide. And I'll show you the reasons why we'd want to hide once we get to a situation where it makes sense to do so. And I'll explain the reasoning behind hiding. We also could choose to rest. So those are the three actions we have at our disposal. And the first one, drawing a card, is the one that really progresses the game along as you trying to find the evidence you need in order to determine which monster we're going to be taking down. So let's go ahead and reveal the very first one here and find out what we have. So the first one here is a regroup. Now I mentioned this as being an action. It is in a way, but it's triggered by a card. So this is a card that will come out when you go through the deck and you can't do this at any time you want. You need to be able to find this particular icon on one of the cards in your row as you draw cards out from the bottom as one of your actions. So you can see here on the left hand side, the regroup here has a bunch of icons. It has a bell. Bells are kind of bad because as you gain additional bells in the row, once you have two of them and a trouble card comes out, it's going to discard everything in the row and it's going to bring whatever color trouble card into play you have to deal with. So there are ways to hide in order to 
remove the entire row that's sitting out here to avoid that potential trouble card from coming out. This icon down here, the magnifying glass, is going to allow me to use this if I want against another card to satisfy a requirement. I can't obviously do anything about this right now because having a magnifying glass and looking for the map or directions not going to help me. But if I go ahead and draw another card here, maybe we'll get something that we can use. Maybe not. We'll see. So, so far, oh, look at that. We actually did. So we ended up getting the med kit. And you can see the requirement is always in the bottom right in order to get the thing that's there. So in this case, I don't really want to do a regroup action right now at all, and I'll talk about that later on when I need to do it, but I'd love to go after this med kit. So let's go ahead and actually spend this. So by spending this card for the one magnifying glass, I discard it. That satisfies the requirement of this card right here, and then the hand symbol is what I get out of it. And this means I put it in my inventory, and now the ability that's on this card is available to me in the future. It can't be a bad thing to have a med pack, but this game moves really fast once you get going. And once you're familiar with the rules, you'll see that you could really rip through this game in quite a speedy time frame. Again, time on the clock in terms of this video is going to be a bit longer as I'm explaining myself and my thoughts as I go along. Next card out from the bottom and choosing to draw a card. This is a great one. This is a discovery card. This is the best card you can possibly find. So while digging around in the neighborhood in the location we're currently in, and one thing to note is at the very beginning of the game, I could have taken advantage of the ability of the neighborhood if I wanted to. It allows me to lose a time to draw three items and keep one and then discard the rest. I chose not to because I really want to value the time that I have, which is the 20 on the clock. I don't want to discard that just yet, so I'm not going to take advantage of this, but cards will come out of this deck that will replace the location you're currently in, which essentially moves the story to a different location, and then comes with a one-time trigger that you then reveal and resolve right away. But looking at the discovery card down below here that we just pulled from the bottom of the deck, this is a great one as I mentioned. Why is it great? Well, it gives you lots of icons on the left to use for other things. It tells you the requirement to get this discovery. We need three compasses. That is a lot. Uh, I do have technically one on Danny right now, which is nice. But I need to kind of, you know, get a few more cards going to make use of this. And what these question marks mean is once we get the three compasses and we discard the cards from the row we need to pay for this one, we then gain two evidence cards, which is huge. Next card out of the bottom of the deck here has a bell. And the reason that bells are concerning, as I told you before, is once we get two of them, that's when a trouble card could come out and any time you've got two bells and a trouble card no matter what order they come out with in your row that's going to trigger the whole row to be discarded you're going to lose some time and there's going to be some trouble coming your way it's really bad all the way around so and it actually there's potential to just kind of add to that to get double trouble essentially so you could have a trouble card land as the first card even if a trouble card showed up right now there'd only be one bell so technically the row wouldn't you know disappear so one trouble card be sitting here but what if another trouble card comes out well that's when the whole row gets discarded it's considered double trouble at that point and you're grabbing two cards from that deck up top here to deal with and it's based on whichever location you're in whether you're in you know current day or reality or you're on the other side of things and of course the other side is going to be quite a bit more aggressive against you Next card from the bottom of the deck is the Old Manor, which replaces the neighborhood. It states on it, you may discard any card from the row. So if there was something in the row that I don't really want, then I could go ahead and get rid of this. And in a way, the bell card is not all that great for what I'm trying to do right now. So I'm probably going to discard it. So I'm just going to go ahead. Wow, that's the thing. It's tough. If I can get one map symbol, then I can gain two comp... Oh, that could be huge, actually. You know what? Maybe I should leave it. Let's leave it. Let's leave it and continue digging through here. Just hope that nothing gets any worse. All right, next. Oh, see, now we've got two bells in the equation. So this is where things get scary because, as I mentioned, the trouble card comes out now. We're going to be in trouble. It's going to discard everything in the row, which means you lose it on the chance of getting the discovery, which is what you're trying to accomplish. The other option I have as an action right now is I could potentially hide. And that action allows you to go ahead and discard all the cards in the row. And then you move the time track cube down by one and you're able to hide to avoid any trouble from hitting you. So all you're really doing in that situation is resetting without having to deal with the trouble cards. You're still losing time by doing it. So the question is, do you take on the trouble 
in terms of these mini cards up top here, or don't you? That's really what you got to figure out. Also, there's that risk of, you know, the double trouble situation I talked about earlier where, you know, two cards are coming at you, and I'll show you how nasty that can be as we go along. So for now, I'm going to risk it one more card. Wow, I was actually thinking that the trouble card was gonna land there, and it didn't. Usually around the fourth to fifth card, things get super, super sketchy. But what you can see here is we ended up getting a clue. It does give me the map icon as well as the magnifying glass. I could use this map icon in order to satisfy this card here or this card here. Why wouldn't I wanna do Brothers card? It's gonna give me two compasses. Then I could use, oh, this is perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna discard this card for the map symbol which will then satisfy the map symbol of brother's car allowing me to use it to gain two compasses which i will use right away discarding this card so i have two compasses and then i'm going to discard mr keating who's going to help me out by giving me another compass that is a total of three to satisfy the discovery card to allow me to go ahead and grab two evidence that literally couldn't have been any better that does not happen very often you'll see that fail many times with trouble cards dropping and destroying you so that's pretty awesome i get to show you guys some evidence now which is great and the whole row has been dealt with so let's grab two pieces of evidence and you can resolve both of them by looking at them first and then place them in as you wish when you get two. So this is what I was talking about earlier. You're going to get this card here, for instance, that'll say something like you found radio waves as an evidence piece or claw marks. But you'll see icons on the on the far left hand side and right hand side. And why this matters is, as I said before, if I place it here, it means whatever card goes here has to use one of these two icons in order for it to connect. And, uh, and that's going to be really important as you go through the building of all this. So I have to be smarter on this. And it's really good these are two great cards actually because some of the cards only have two icons on them or three four is really good which means it's probably wise being that we're early on to place these more central so that they can connect to more cards because if i go ahead and place something like this here it allows me to use either of these two symbols for here or here which is great same idea if we go a little further down so i think i might actually split it up like this and we'll build out from there First card from the bottom of the deck. Wow, we got another clue. That's awesome. So again, I'm going to have to work my way up to getting a magnifying glass and a compass in order to get this piece of evidence. Let's continue searching here and see what we get. Now remember, oh wow, actually I just looked at my team. I could be really greedy and use these two cards for my team in order to get the two symbols I need to satisfy this card and get the evidence. But I kind of want to wait just a bit to see how this line pans out. And if it starts to go south or has a risk of landing trouble, then maybe I'll change my mind on it. We'll see. So let's go ahead and draw the next one. Oh my gosh, what is with my luck right now? This is ridiculous. So a discovery, uh, this is great, but it's bad at the same time because I got a bell, but the icons I have available to me are not that hot. But look what I just got over here. That's insane. So I might as well, I mean, now I have to. So let's go ahead and take Danny. We're going to exhaust Danny. We're going to exhaust my other teammate here. So both of them are going to be used. And the only way I can get these back is if I do a regroup action that you saw that card come through before. If I had it actually satisfied its requirements, I could go through a regroup action and show you what that's about. But long story short, I'm going to use it for this one. So it'll discard this discovery card. We'll place the deck down. We're grabbing two more pieces of evidence already. We're off to a hot start, but I guarantee you that's not going to stick around too long. We got eggs here as one of them. And the next one is an old book. Okay, so how do I want to place these? I've gone ahead and slotted eggs in right here as one piece of evidence and an old book over there. Now, again, you can place things anywhere you want in here, but as soon as you try to place something that's adjacent to another card, that's where you need to ensure at least one of the icons match and you can draw a line from them in terms of adjacency. That's okay to place an old book way over there. And actually, it's part of my plan. By playing this a couple times, I learned that it's kind of smart to not put those twos kind of in the center because it's really lowering the chances you're going to find evidence that will connect to be able to place adjacent to them later on. But, you know, it gets really tough. I played a couple ones off camera prior to this playthrough, and I wasn't able to get the final slot filled, and I ended up running out of time. So it is very tricky. So let's go ahead and grab another card from the bottom and continue exploring Woad Ridge. 
Oh, look at that. We got ourselves a location card. So we're going to do a little swap out here. So we'll take this card, throw it in the discard pile. The cemetery is here now. So it says, you may lose one time to draw the bottom three cards, discard one, and then place one on the top of the deck, place one on the bottom of the deck. I mean, this is a perfect time to do that. So I've definitely knocked down my time to 19. The reason I want to do it is I don't have any kind of like trouble situation going on in my row. I don't have cards that have the bell icon. This is a great time to kind of set myself up for a success. Maybe get this clue. We'll see. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and draw three cards from the bottom and we can discard one. So here's ally found, a clue, and trouble. It was a really easy decision to get rid of that trouble card, and I'll show you guys how nasty these are. There's a whole bunch of them in the deck, but thankfully the cemetery helped me to get rid of one. I have two more cards. One has to go on the top of the deck. The other one goes on the bottom. And this is also a tough choice because based on the icons here, neither of them are going to really help me with satisfying the clue I have here, except for this one, which is kind of half satisfying what I need here. I still need the compass symbol as well. So maybe keeping the ally fi uh, found and maybe letting this one go to the top. It kind of hurts to have a clue card go to the top of the deck because I won't be seeing that for a very long time. But I'd rather work towards something I can get than be greedy and hope to get both of them. So knowing that I'm going to be drawing from the bottom of the deck anyway, I'm just going to leave the ally found there because I'd be drawing that card from the bottom of the deck. The other one is underneath this right here. You'll see there it is. And it's sitting underneath the covered card and we're ready to continue on. So we did get a bell icon. That's not the best. Let's see what else we find as we continue to explore the cemetery. Oh, see, that's where things get rough. So as of right now, we have a bell and a trouble card. We're safe right now, but if we pull a single bell more, and there's bell cards on a lot of the good cards, we're in trouble. So it might not be worth it to go after this. Um, however, what I might do is show you what happens when this thing triggers, at least one of the ways. And I really hope a double trouble doesn't show up. We see a, you know, a second trouble card. That would be a great example of how to inflict some pain on yourself. But let's do it just for the sake of the playthrough so you guys can see it. Oh, it's a discovery. Okay, but guess what? That's the thing. As of right now, as exciting as this is, it's still a bell. We have two. This is a trouble card, and it immediately triggers when there's two bells in play. So what happens? All of these cards get discarded, every single one. So what I could have done there, as I mentioned, was I could have hidden, and that would have avoided me having to take one of these cards. Time is going to drop down by one, so it's down to 18. And because this triggered based on two bells and a trouble card, because only one trouble card triggered, only one pink trouble card comes out of this deck. So let's see what we get. We got some parents. They found us at the cemetery, and they're interrupting our conversations. I don't like it. We have Marty, our team member. He's going to use his token in order to say, get out of here, parents. We got, we got things to worry about here. Now you can see if I couldn't satisfy that icon by using the token like I did, what would happen is I would then be able to choose how many dice from this pool I have. And these are all my available dice right now. I want to roll in order to try to get that symbol. The only two symbols that would help me is, of course, landing the symbol that matches or landing the star symbol, as that's considered a wild. So that could have been what I do. And it'll likely, if another parent card comes up in the future, I no longer have that token to use at the moment. So I will need to roll in order to satisfy it. But I'm just trying to show you there's other ways to deal with these cards beyond just tokens. And that's where the dice come into play. You'll see that as we go. And again, if you fail it, you roll the dice, you don't get what you want, and you can't re-roll your way out of it, you're going to lose some time. Next card off the bottom of the deck is a clue. We are finding tons of things at the cemetery. It's awesome. Let's uh, hope that this actually gives us some evidence though. Uh, wow, okay, we'll take that. That's amazing. So I literally can just go ahead right now. I'm gonna discard this for, uh, well, uh, let me think about this. How do I wanna do it? Yeah, this makes sense. I'm gonna discard ally found in order to help us satisfy the clue down here. So we gain one piece of evidence. That really worked out quite nicely. What did we find in the cemetery? We found some secret files. I ended up dropping the secret files right down here because it's adjacent to the eggs here. The icons are the same, so that is a valid placement. I gotta admit, this is on camera and I'm doing pretty good. It did not turn out the way it did when I was playing off camera. I've got five pieces of evidence already. I've only lost two times so far, so I'm pretty happy about that. Let's continue exploring to find what we... S okay, what is this? Uh, the forest. Let's get rid of this card. So we're moving on to a different location, even though I really like the cemetery. You may discard an item to gain two time. Oh, well. <laughs> 
Well then, oh, I guess this doesn't classify itself as an item. This goes in your inventory, but technically an item card is one of these mini cards. So technically that would be incredible. That would be so good. Uh, but this is just, an, from my understanding based on the rules, this is not considered an item. It's considered a card that comes from the deck. It's a hunted card that just ends up being in your hand. So can't make use of that, but let's keep digging through the forest here and see what we find. Oh my gosh, what is going on? This doesn't make any sense. Okay, let's continue going. Okay, now it gets a little more sketchy. So as you can see here, I've gone ahead and drawn two in a row because I was excited about that. Uh, but what you can see is I got two bells. So I am on the cusp of a single trouble card causing all kinds of grief for me. Um, do I want to risk it or do I want to hide is the question. So right now I have almost enough to satisfy that discovery. That's super tempting. Um, it's also tempting to potentially use my team member, Jack, who allows me to discard any card from the row. So if I really didn't like this because it has a bell, I could ditch it and then hope to find better cards. So maybe I'll do that so I can be a little greedy with this discovery that just popped up. So Jack is going to say, forget the regroup, not going to happen. We're going to continue on. Oh, another one with a bell came up. So it's a clue. I am burning through all my clues and discoveries. This is insanity. And I promise you this deck has been thoroughly shuffled. Um, but this is scary because if I don't make use of all these coming up in this order as they are right now, uh, later in the game, it's going to get really tough all of a sudden. So what am I going to do at this point? Well, I can't satisfy this with any of these. I can't do anything about this. So this, this is one of those situations where I either need to hide to avoid trouble or gamble. So I'm going to go ahead and gamble. <laughs> this is sketchy. Here we go. All right, we're good. We're good. We found ourselves lucky. Lucky came out of the forest here. Okay, so we do have enough. This at least gives us a compass, but that's not going to help us on anything. Um, shoot. And we have nothing that can actually... We can't even... So what's really cool, just so you understand what lucky is, if we were able to satisfy this, we could gain this companion by using this icon if it showed up on the left-hand side, which it currently doesn't. And then I could actually take a token for that fist. And you can see the fists are something you can actually roll. So very similar to Marty, who actually already has a token beside him. I could get another one from Lucky by gaining Lucky, but it's not going to work out because I don't have that icon anywhere on the left here. I think I need to hide. I think it's being a little foolish to go any further with this. Yeah, let's hide. Let's go ahead and hide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw the whole row. This really hurts. I'm going to, I might regret this, but I did burn one time. So I'm down to 17 now and let's go ahead and see. What comes out? Oh, look at that. Good call. Good call. Now, as you can see, my team members have been heavily used over here. Thankfully, that trouble card didn't end up biting me. I do still have Jayla here, who I haven't used yet, but Jayla allows me to move the time cube back a space. I'm just going to use her. I'm going to turn her to exhaust her and I'm going to bring the time back to 18. Marty over here, hiding in the corner, still has three tokens I can use, and I'll be using these as I go along if I need them. And we're gonna to continue to investigate this location in the forest to see what we find. And we'll have to bail if things get really rough. So we got ourselves a shortcut that could be potentially good. So let's continue and see how things go. Oh no, we got the double trouble situation. So this is what I was talking about. So basically at this point, all these get discarded. And what ends up happening right now is we lose a time, so it drops to 17. Two cards are going to come off the top of this deck, and we have to deal with them. And, okay, and you reveal them both. So we have parents, and we need this icon in order to satisfy it, otherwise we lose time. And then we have the portal. So basically, both of the things are going to happen, and in this situation, we can go ahead and use tokens if we have them, use dice if we need them. We're going to use dice in this situation and if I don't use dice or I choose not to then I gotta suffer that uh, one delay of dealing with the parents so what I'm gonna do is do something risky I'm gonna grab a single die and see if I can nail the parents not actually nail them and hit them but hit the side of the die I need which is this conversation icon if I get that or I get the wild symbol I can satisfy this so here's hoping that pans out I don't have any re-rolls yet maybe I'll get a heart nope 
Okay, so that did not work out. It goes in the used area. So I ended up failing that, which means I do lose a single time. So I'm dropping down to 16. I could have easily used more dice, but I'm being a little stingy right now. We'll probably use more in the future. Next up, portal triggers. And this is going to flip us from our current world into the other side. So as you can see, the deck has flipped over. So how does this work? Well, essentially you just remove the cover. It was like this originally. You take the whole deck, which had the pink side up. I flipped it so the green side is up now and then you just flip the cover over and go like this done and you're going to be drawing now and everything you draw from the bottom is going to be green and things are going to get more nasty as we go along which is unfortunate this card is now discarded so we are now kind of in this other world which like I said, we're going to be using dice in here for sure. And we're trying to also find a way out. You can find discoveries and clues and things like that, I think, in the, uh, in the on the other side. But uh, I find that it's more often you find them in the real world. Um, and it's obviously a lot more punishing in this realm. Uh, we did find a clue to start things off. But you'll notice we got ourselves a bell right off the hop. I'm going to continue on through here. Okay, we found a portal. That's good. So we can initiate the portal if we get a compass, which I literally don't have right now. So that's not going to help me. Uh, I've got two bells. So if I pull a trouble card, whew, that's probably pretty, that's probably likely. Uh, I'm going to risk it. I'm going to go one more. I'm going to hope to get the compass because that's what I want to get out of here. No, that did not work. Okay, so that is going to trigger trouble. Oh no, I was I was kind of pushing my luck there. That didn't work. So really if you yeah, we're just gonna flip it over like this. Oh, now we're drawing from the green deck. Now, the change to this situation recently for the playthrough is that the icons on green trouble cards are now doubled. So it's gonna cost me or I'm gonna need to pay two of these fists or attacking symbols in order to deal with this rabid dog that just showed up. So now we get to talk about how I'm gonna go ahead and deal with this and also how the dice work when I'm rolling larger amounts of dice beyond just one. When you roll dice, you can always roll between one, which I've already done, as you've seen, up to five dice for a single roll. So you can go nuts. I could go overkill on this if I wanna exert myself that much, but it's gonna cost you time to bring those dice back from the spent area back to the opposite end so you have some energy to actually use in the future. So there is, and you haven't seen the rest action yet, but there's a way, as well as regrouping, to bring the dice back from the spent area back over here, gain some hearts back and all that good stuff. So as you can see, this rabid dog is going to hurt me by hitting me for a number of hearts. And if I was to not get the two icons I need for this one and again the prototype only has one it's going to make me suffer two health hits for those which is nasty I also could use Marty preemptively before dice rolling to satisfy one of those icons and then roll dice to try to get the other I think I'm going to do that so we're going to use one and I'm going to roll two dice because I really don't want to take the hits well actually you know what I, I might not mind it I'll hold on to some dice let's just go with one this is going to be super risky but hopefully this pans out Oh, okay, so that did not work out for me. So I will take a health hit. So I'll go ahead and knock health down by one. But this, as I mentioned before, is not a heart anymore. It is a reroll icon. And I can't reroll the die that I'm rolling right now, but I can keep it on the side. And in a future roll, I'll have a reroll. I'm going to count it on a D8. There we go, I got my D8, it's set to one, letting me know in the future I have a reroll to use. This die has been spent, this token has been lost for now. The rabid dog is gonna go over here, it's already taken a nice chunk out of me. Let's continue to explore and see what else we find. I don't know if I wanna look anymore. We found a discovery, that's good, let's keep on going. Hopefully we can actually gain this discovery. We need a compass and we need the magnifying glass. That's not gonna work for that. Uh, this portable TV allows me to discard this card to flip the deck and return it to the real world, wow. That is huge, so if I can pay one magnifying glass, that would be killer. Let's see, portal, that's another option here. Okay, we're getting a few things we could do, but again, in terms of the icons I can actually use, it's not looking good, but I'm okay continuing to explore. That I don't like though, that throws a wrench into my thoughts. This is a really brutal decision because we've got a discovery card I really want. The portable TV is an awesome way to be able to flip this card deck back over to the normal side of things. And then we've got a portal that can also help us flip the deck over as well. But again, icon wise, we have nothing from these icons that can help us satisfy any of these things along the bottom. All of our team members currently don't have anything that can help that way either. So I'm really just either fishing from the deck and really hoping not to get another trouble card because that would send two 
two green trouble cards at us that have the icons being doubled, which means that'd be a lot of dice we're going to need in order to kind of fend that off. Or I could just hide and hope for a better chance later on. I think uh, I might risk one more. I this could be a really bad decision, but you know what? It's on camera, and it's for the fun of the game, so let's do it. We got ourselves... Oh, look at that! We found the major character within the storyline. That's pretty cool. Uh, does this trigger anything bad? No, it doesn't, because there's a trouble card and one bell, but not another bell. So we are safe. And I actually got the symbols I need. That's amazing. So... Oh, but here's the thing. Well, yeah, that could work. Um... So the other thing, just so you guys understand about this character here, and it might be hard to see, but there is an icon right here. This is an icon for a wild. So basically, if I'm able to satisfy uh, this character's icon down here, I can gain this in my inventory. This actually should have a hand symbol in the uh, top right hand corner, but again, it's a prototype, so that one was missing there. But uh, if I was to find this symbol, which I don't have, actually I do, I could burn my discovery card to get this card and I'd be able to place it down here. But the other thing I'm more interested in doing is getting out of this other side. I don't want to be a part of it anymore. It's creeping me out. I'd rather go ahead and use one of these symbols to flip or do something else. So let's do that. Let's take the, probably just take the portal. So let's go ahead and discard this card for its compass. So this will go over here. That is going to satisfy this portal's requirement, which allows me to flip the deck right now. All right, thank goodness we got out of there. So when you activate a portal card after you've done your discarding and resolving of the cards to activate the portal, the whole row is discarded. And of course the deck is flipped back over and the clock tower card is flipped and placed back on top. Uh, we lost everything that was in our, our row here. There was three cards left. They all got flipped over and placed in the discard pile. And uh, one other thing I wanna mention in case you guys are unfamiliar with the rest and regroup action, cause I haven't had to take it yet but I probably will, is there's a card in the prototype that sums it up quite nicely. Uh, for resting, basically, at any time of my turn, I can choose to rest, I lose a time to do any or all of the following. I can refresh five dice from this area and bring them back over here. I can move a clue card, which is on the evidence board, that allows me to kind of toy with the different symbols and ensure that I can hopefully fill it out. The regroup, and also, by the way, I also get to gain a health back, so that would help in my case. Uh, regroup down here, again, can only be taken if you find that icon in the top right-hand corner of a card. We've seen the regroup card come through. I haven't used it yet, but if I did, it's the most powerful of all the ones that help you. Uh, it allows you to refresh all of your dice, which is huge. You uh, move a clue card as well, if you'd like. Uh, you gain two health, and then you refresh all your team cards, and that one is the key. That one brings back a whole bunch of abilities that also includes Marty's, tokens coming back all these guys come back and you're ready to go again of course the second that you come out of a portal back into the forest again you've got trouble so that's what we have right here and i'm really hoping i don't see another one i'm gonna risk it and go one more card here Oh, different location. Government Lab this time. So the forest is going to get discarded. Government Lab says, draw three trouble cards. That doesn't sound good. If one of them is an FBI card, it attacks you. Place the rest in the middle of the trouble deck. So basically what happens is we keep drawing cards until we get an FBI agent. As soon as we get one, we stop drawing cards. And then every other card that's not the FBI agent gets put back into the middle of the trouble deck. So this is relatively simple, a quick draw here. First one is a portal. Nope, that's not an FBI agent, but that one is. So we're gonna go ahead and just place this portal card back in the middle. Now, thematically, the way I look at this is it's almost like it lets you know, it gives you advanced knowledge of like, okay, about halfway through the deck here, we know there's gonna be a portal coming up, right? It's almost as if you saw it, it didn't actually hurt you, but you know it's kind of right there. The FBI agent on the other hand though is Thankfully, a purple card, so we only have to deal with this icon once. I could, actually I can't. I don't think I have that icon anymore with Marty. I only have this one, which I could use to get my health back, which actually I might do, but I'll do it after this attack. I need to roll. So let's roll two dice. I think two is safe enough. And I also have a, ooh, I have a reroll. Should I just roll one and bank on the reroll? Tough decision. Hmm, I'm really biding my time by not rolling a lot of dice. Let's, well, keeping a reroll for later might be good. Let's, let's use two dice. Let's be safe. Nice, I got a wild, that satisfies it. This one does not help, so we are okay. So both of them get spent in the end, regardless of their outcome. We don't lose any time because we dealt with the FBI agent and we're good to go. That satisfies the government lab. Let's keep on fishing through that government lab. There's gotta be some kind of evidence in there that they're hiding from us. 
An item has been found. That seems pretty good. It's also got a couple of really good icons on it. And uh, we could potentially, if we actually satisfy this icon down here for item found, then we can gain an item, which is right here. We haven't gained any items yet. That's what I really love about this row idea is you're able to, you know, make use of the card in two different ways. You can either use it as an actual way to pay for another card or you can actually use it to satisfy its criteria on the card to get something in the top right hand corner. Now, not all of them are like that because you got trouble cards in there, but I like that mechanic. It kind of keeps things real flexible. What I don't like is when I pull the next card and I see the word trouble, that was two right there. That's double trouble. And that is going to have us drop down to 15. We're going to discard this row and be grabbing two cards. Well, I ended up getting two portals. This is quite interesting. And it's worth noting, if you happen to get an enemy and a portal, you have to fight the enemy and then the portal will trigger. If you get two portals, it does not take you, in my case, from current reality to the other side and then flip you back over to current reality. It just takes you to the other side, which is not good. Or if you were on the other side, it would take you back the other way. But that's not possible because technically these are pink cards and wouldn't be drawn if you were on the other side anyway. So long story short, we are going to the other side. So we're going to go ahead and discard these two cards and we're going to go ahead and do our little deck flip here. So I'll show you guys this. It basically just goes like that. And then, of course, the top card flips over like so. And we're going to be drawing from the bottom. I don't like this because whenever we go to the other side, bad things happen. So let's go ahead and see what we get out of the gates. Oh, Clue, that's not too bad. We got the uh, bell icon there. Hopefully we can find a Clue at the Government Lab. Discovery, that's good. Very good, although two bell icons. Oh, oh that's, that hurts. That hurts. I, I'm so tempted to keep going with that. Let's do it. Oh, I knew it was gonna bite me and it did. It did. So we're gonna go ahead and discard all this. Rats, okay. So we're going to go ahead and discard it. We're going to drop ourselves down to 14 time. We're almost at the halfway mark in terms of time, but not, not there just yet. And that was just a, a single one that's going to be coming at us. But it is green, and it's Evil Mr. Keating. We're going to need two of these uh, attack icon symbols or fist icon symbols in order to deal with them. Uh, and right now, the only way that's coming through is dice. So I'm going to go ahead and roll two. I've got my reroll as a backup. Let's see how this goes. Ooh, that's not good. Oh, shoot. This is going to be bad. So I could use a reroll here if I wanted to, or I could just take the health hits. So I, uh, I'm i going to hold on to my reroll and just take the health hits. This kind of hurts. So two health coming off me. Card has been resolved. Dice have been spent. Not using my reroll right now. All right, let's continue on through here. I, I do not want to be on this other side anymore. Nice, the portable TV is back. A discovery. Can we happen to gain? We can't. Not yet. There's a portal. Okay, can I use the portal somehow? Yes, I can. So I could use the portal, just get out of here. And I think I'm going to. I'm going to discard the discovery card and say the heck with it. I don't want to be here anymore. So we're going through the portal. We're going to flip the deck, which means everything here is going to disappear. We're going to get out of this side of the deck. I do not want to see it. <laughs> it's bad. Bad news. And we'll continue exploring. There's the regroup action. So if we did want to take that, that option is sitting here for us. It's a great card to get the start, especially when you get a discovery right behind it. That's awesome. We need, oh, we're so close. We just need one more compass symbol. We've already got two of them from the regroup card. Can we get the next one? No, instead we get a card that interacts with us right away. This is the first time this has shown up. We found some bullies. So we have to deal with this, otherwise we take some health hits. So do I have a way to converse these individuals? Nope, not through items or allies or anything right now. So what I'm gonna do is do some dice rolling. I'm gonna hope that with one die I can satisfy the bullies that have found me at the government lab. Nope. Should I re-roll? Probably. Yeah, let's do that re-roll. I'll cash it in now. Let's see if we can pull it off. Yep, we got it. That was worth it. So we're going to exhaust that die over here. This card is now gone from the row. And we can continue our journey in the government lab. Item found. Oh, we got it. We got what we need. That's awesome. So we're going to uh, discard the item found for the compass. We're discarding the regroup for both these icons to satisfy all three over here for the big time discovery at the government lab. And that is going to get us two evidence. Awesome. What do we get? Missing pets and shadowy figure. 
And now comes the question as to where I should fill these in on the evidence board. And this actually worked out perfectly. These two cards right here match the symbols that are on this side with the radio waves. So we have everything we need in order to complete our first column. So we're gonna add up three and three, and we know we're at the government lab. So we're gonna go into the adventure book, look up government lab, three and three is six. You enter a darkened room, shiny steel gurneys reflecting the light from the swinging doorway behind you. The weight of the silence is palpable and oppressive as you explore deeper into the room. When you reach the far wall, the lights flicker on and a crazed looking man in a dirty white lab coat now blocks the doorway. Welcome, subjects, he says in a voice that is a weird mix of friendly and threatening. He motions to the gurneys between you and continues. I need new samples and look who shows up just in time. Delightful. What are you talking about, old man? Danny asks brazenly. Ignoring the slight, the man continues. Just a sample, young man. Any of you will do, but I need more to continue my work. Now get on the gurney. He motions once more. And then you can be on your way. His eyes dart back and forth as you weigh your options. As if sensing your distress, he turns toward the door, and you hear the loud click of the lock slam home like a gunshot. We could attempt to talk our way out of the situation. If we fail, though, we lose two time. That's pretty rough. Or we can just take a single damage. I think based on the fact that we only have three dice left to roll and we could rest in order to get some dice back very soon, I think we probably should just take the damage. We do have a med kit, so we're able to heal later on, so it shouldn't be too bad. We'll go ahead and remove one for the hit. All right, seeing as we're in the real world right now, I wanna explore some more as quickly as possible. We also might wanna regroup here because we're getting kinda of low on health. We're half of our health right now and most of our dice have been depleted, plus most of our characters and team have used their abilities this point so finding a regroup would be huge we have an item found so we could potentially go after an item we haven't done this the whole game long it might be interesting to show you guys allies and items in my plays off camera i actually got quite a few of them but this time i'm being very aggressive on the evidence because i failed a couple times being able to pull this off we'll see how it goes spot is also in this area so let's see we need either oh we could actually find the item let's do it so let's go ahead and discard spot in order to find the item that is the one magnifying glass we need to gain an item card that's fantastic we'll go ahead and just place the deck down for a second the item card off the top is a telescope of course you'd find a telescope inside of a government lab draw three cards now we can do this when we want to right now it sits in our inventory draw three cards discard one place one on top of the deck place one on the bottom of the deck so this is very similar to the one we found when we were moving through the hunted deck earlier on but that is super handy especially if we get to a spot where we think a nasty card is coming we can draw a bunch and put the one we need where we want it and also get rid of something nasty at the same time Let's keep going. I like what I'm seeing so far. No, I do not. That is trouble. I don't like to see that. Let's continue. We got Fizz Cola. So this allows us to discard. Ooh, to refresh two dice. That's pretty good. Let's keep going one more. Oh my gosh, lots of cola in this government lab. Ah, this is getting risky now. I'm gonna choose to hide. I'm gonna choose to hide. I don't think this is worth at this point. So I'm gonna hide. We're gonna get rid of all this stuff. There's, co there, I mean, there isn't more of a sign of trouble coming your way than a bunch of fizzy colas laying around and uh, in a government lab for no reason. So let's go ahead and just tick our time down. Off camera, just so you know, we're down to 13. We're gonna keep on going, see what we can find. We found ourselves a shortcut. This could lead to helping us gain something that needs a magnifying glass, or we could potentially gain a token if we can satisfy the compass symbol down below. I want to regroup and I got it. It took forever, but I found one. I just need to find that map icon. So let's keep going and we got it. Look at that, let's do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and spend the clue for the icon to do the regroup. Now, the one thing to mention is that the regroup costs me two. I've actually scratched off the one on here. It costs two now to do this. So I'm dropping down to 11. We're almost halfway, but as of right now, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces of evidence out of 15. So we're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty good based on the time and based on the evidence. But I can tell you, as we get closer to the end, getting those right pieces of evidence to fit in the right spots gets real, real tricky. So we're gonna do the regroup. We're refreshing all of our dice, which means everything is coming over here. 
here. This is why regroup is so awesome. Um, and maybe I should have, in hindsight, actually rolled the dice inside of that uh, story narrative, but I didn't know when I was going to get that regroup card. So sometimes you just don't know how things will pan out. We can move a clue card, but right now things are spaced so nicely on the evidence board. I don't need to do that. I definitely will gain back two HP. Thankful to do that. And then we're gonna refresh our team cards, which is a huge bonus. One thing I just noticed that I did not take advantage of was Marty still had a plus one health, which I could have used before I did my regroup action, which means I would have had an extra point of health here. So that kind of hurts. And what I'm gonna actually do is now that things have been regrouped and refreshed, I'm gonna go ahead and spend it right now in order to put one on there. But you can see what I mean. I would actually have been back to full health if I had done that more efficiently. All right, I'm happy to have the gang back in full gear. Plus, we're not on the other side, so we can continue on here and hope to find good things. We got ourselves a clue. That's good. We need two compasses to pull that off, and we know we've got uh, Celia over here that has one compass, so we could really go aggressive on that. But first, we're changing locations. We're actually leaving the government lab. We're going to the high school. It says if there, are a bull if there is a bully's card in the trouble discard pile, it attacks you. Well, that's unfortunate because there was some bullies that showed up earlier. We dealt with them. We had a conversation. We tried to be nice about it, got them out of our hair, and now they're back again. This time around, I don't feel like just having a conversation with them anymore. I'm going to actually use Jack here, who's got a baseball bat, and it says discard any card from the row. I'm going to literally just have that card tossed. Uh, so we're just going to get rid of the bullies card so I don't have to spend any dice on it, and I think the bat did the talking. We're going to continue on. Not that I recommend that bats are how you resolve bullies, but hey, you know, sometimes in a, in a fictional world that kind of makes sense so clue here next up we've got uh wow okay so we've got a lot of magnifying glasses and ah uh, this is tough we don't have any compasses though we need more compasses and i also need to exhaust jack here for doing what he did put him down below let's continue on let's see oh we got one we got one so we could go after a clue if we don't want to be greedy that probably isn't a bad idea. However, we don't have a single trouble card yet, and we only have one bell. So I'm tempted to go another one further just to see what else we get. Yeah, see, there's the trouble card. Okay, and this is where we now need to make a decision. And I'm going to do that decision right now. So I'm going to go ahead and resolve this by discarding the ally card. So instead of going after an ally card, which I probably could use, I'd rather try to go after a clue here. So let's discard these to get a clue piece of evidence is strange slime still lots of options in terms of where i place this and it has four icons i ended up placing strange slime way up here it matches for this icon right here plus gives me two over here to match to one thing that i noticed that i definitely think i messed up on is you'll notice when i place the old book way over there it doesn't actually it wasn't an incorrect placement but I didn't look at the icon that was on the edge of both of the cards on either side. You can see there's a paw on both sides. I have never seen a piece of evidence that has a paw on both sides. So this area right here is gonna be near impossible to fill. So I will have to do at some point, I'm gonna to need to do a rest action or a regroup in order to move that card somewhere else. But before we do that, we need to resolve the column that we just triggered. So we got a four, a two, and a one. So this is gonna be a total of seven and we're at the high school. Principal's office. We really shouldn't be in here, Celia whispers as she closes the door to the principal's office. We shouldn't have been in a lot of places. Why stop now, Danny retorts, already looking through the filing cabinets. Jack turns over an hourglass on the principal Garcia's desk. Put that down. Jayla takes the hourglass out of his hands and carefully puts it back. Out of the corner of her eye, she sees a drawer slightly ajar on the inside of the desk. She quickly tries to open it, but something is caught inside. It's jammed, Jayla says. Will this help? asks Danny as he pulls a screwdriver out of the cabinet. Celia peers out the door's window and sees a shadow growing at the end of the hall accompanied by heavy footsteps. Hurry up, someone's coming, she whispers. Danny runs over and hands the screwdriver to Jayla. Do we work the drawer open with the screwdriver and lose one time and draw an item card, or do we keep moving? I'm gonna go ahead and say that we should actually lose one time because we seem to be doing all right in order to gain an item from that drawer in the high school. See what we get. We found some binoculars. This says draw three cards and put them back on top of the deck in any order. Interesting. Okay, so we'll go ahead and place that right there. We have some deck manipulation cards for sure. 
I'm gonna go ahead and have Jayla actually give us that time back on the track. So exhausting her to bring us back to 11 where we just came from. I'm pretty happy not using the med kit. I don't need to use a telescope right now. The binoculars I can see being really useful if we happen to go from uh, reality to the other side. If we time it just right, we could mess with the deck a little bit. Uh, but besides that, it's not something we need to use just in this moment. We still have the shortcut, a clue. We need another, we need two compasses on this one, but we do technically have one from Dan over here so if I got really desperate I could go after that I'd love to find discovery but we do have a trouble card to deal with I don't like that so let's go one more card and see what we get we got ourselves another clue all right so how do we want to play this it's really tempting to use Danny here to potentially satisfy the shortcut in order to gain a token here, which would come from this supply up top into my hand, which would be quite nice. But I still have Marty with one of these tokens, so I'm pretty happy with that for now. Probably not going to go down that road. Um, the real risk here is pulling another trouble card or a bell card. That's probably a pretty high probability, so I'm going to choose to probably just hide. We're going to hide for a round. We're going to ditch all this. It looked like it could be good, but it just kind of got worse as it went along. And I don't like the risk factor there. So we'll go ahead and toss those off to the side. Also, just so you guys understand, there was a pile of cards over here from a previous discard that I was doing, and they should have just been on top of this deck, so I've gone ahead and done that. We're going to continue exploring at the high school, see what we can find here. So, oh my gosh. And you can see why I definitely had an instinct that something bad was going to happen. It definitely could have. We now have a trouble card right up front. Oh my gosh. I did not assume there would be two of them back to back like that. But you know what? Remember at the beginning of the game when things were going real smooth for me? Yeah, things are coming back around to bite me now. So this is going to be two cards coming at me. We've got parents coming to this school wondering what the heck we're doing. And we got potential. Well, we are going to be flipping the deck over. So that's unfortunate. So for this one here, I'm going to choose to use Marty to intervene with the parents. So that's going to resolve that situation. So that is gone. But now the deck is going to flip. So it's not too bad, besides the fact we are on the other side now, which is probably not the best. We got a portal, so a way out already. Wow, I could literally use Danny. We could just get the heck out of here. I'm actually tempted to do that. Let's, well, let's not do it yet. Let's see how well the row goes. Next one here is escape plan. Interesting. So we could, we can't actually get this right now. And we could do the portal still, and we have one bell icon, so we'll go another card. Now we have two bell icons. This is probably where we need to stop. So, ooh, look at this. Oh yeah, I've got to do it. I've got to use Celia for one of the magnifying glass icons, and I'll use Danny for the other one, uh, for the compass. That's going to allow us to do the discovery card, and we're going to be able to go ahead and gain two evidence. That's awesome. So let's see what we get. We got ourselves a witness, and we got ourselves a cryptic message. Gone ahead and slotted in the witness and the cryptic message near the bottom here. This one connects, so we have to check to make sure symbols are okay. Again, as I mentioned, that old book needs to move at some point. This escape plan is really powerful if I can get into my hand by paying this map icon. It says discard this card to either discard a trouble card from the row or ignore an event. That's really, really handy. So if I can pull that off, I definitely will go after it. Next one out here is item found. That's always good. So I could go along with that. Or I could just get out of here. Oh, man, I really want the item, but getting out of this other side is probably the best idea. So let's do that. Let's go and discard this to pay for the portal. That's going to get rid of the whole row, which unfortunately gets rid of the escape plan, which I'm definitely eyeing. And uh, I don't think, yeah, there's no other way I could go about getting that one. And we're going to go ahead and flip this deck over. And we're back to a normal state. All right, let's continue on and see how we do. Med kit. Okay, we still have one of those. Uh, oh, we're going to a different location here. The mall this time. So this is going to be discarded. The mall says you may lose one time to draw three ally cards and keep one. Let's do it. I definitely want some allies. We don't have any yet. So let's see what our options are from the mall. We've got Bubba, which gives us two of those, icon two of those icons, which is pretty awesome. Dipper for conversation. And Bob. All right, so we got some options. I really like this one because I feel like we're going to get into a lot of fights, especially if we go to the other side. So I'm going to go ahead with Bubba, add that to our inventory. These other two are going to get discarded. That was definitely worth it. And let's continue checking out the mall. Of course, we're going to find some trouble at the mall. Do I keep going or not? Let's go. Let's go one more. Ugh. Fairgrounds, okay, we're safe for now. For now, being the 
keyword. You may refresh up to three dice. Oh my gosh. So I don't have any dice to refresh, so I don't even get to take advantage of that. I should probably... I don't know. I'm not too concerned. I kind of want to go one more. Okay, item found. Can I can I get this item somehow? I cannot. I can't. Um, let's do... How about this? Let's use our telescope. Well, we don't have any discoveries or clues here. I'm tempted to use my telescope to set my deck up, but if there's no clues or discoveries in here, it makes no sense. I might just want to hide. Because um, I just, I got a funny feeling a trouble card is coming my way, and I just, I don't want to deal with it. So let's go ahead and hide. I'm kind of scared of doing this because I am burning time by hiding, but it's helping me to stay alive. We'll see if this was a good choice. Ally found. Oh, we got some good stuff in there. So we could potentially get an ally. Fido here. Nice. So the fairground's got a lot of good stuff. Mm, neither of the symbols I need at the bottom for both of them. This is where... I'll go one more. Regroup. Oh, good. Okay, so we might have some options here. So, yeah, let's do... This is great, actually. Let's go... Oh, what is it? What do I want to do here? Al I can go Ally or Fido here. Oh, let's go Ally. Yeah, I could get the token, though. That'd be so nice. Let's do that. Let's get rid of the regroup to do the ally. This also get rid of one of the bells, which is nice and keeps this line kind of clean. So an ally off the top is Tex. Look at that. There's some good icon usage there. All right, let's continue on and see what else we find. Clue, perfect. We need a compass though. We need a compass. Discovery, oh, this row's getting so much better, but now we have two bells in there, which means one trouble card and we are going to be into some trouble. All right, now that we have a decent setup in terms of cards here that I could actually go after, I'm going to use the telescope. So draw three cards, discard one, place one on top, place one on the bottom. So we'll go ahead and toss this. This is considered an item. It is now gone. We're going to draw three cards, and we can set these up the way we want. So the first one is... Oof, the darkness. That might be my discard. Oh my gosh, another darkness. And then the escape plan. But my mistake, I put them on the wrong side. <laughs> I got a little more excited than I needed to. Uh, bullies, but we got tons of bullies, so that's bad. Um, so the only one here that's a positive is probably the brother's car. Like, that's literally the only one. So we'll put the brother's car on the bottom of the deck, which I'm going to end up drawing anyway. Uh, I'm going to put the bully, the other bully card. Oh, no. It might... Oh, my gosh. There's nothing I can do, but it has to go on the top of the deck. But the top of the deck doesn't exist right now so this is a weird situation i don't know if i have to place it here and i have to encounter it or because the deck was depleted based on my draw i need to reshuffle everything i imagine i would need to reshuffle this deck first and then place it on top so let's go ahead and do that all right so just so you guys can see how this all panned out i reshuffled the entire deck one of the boys cards on the top of the deck we obviously had the brother's card on the bottom which would have been drawn next because i know what it was and it was safe and then one of them gets discarded so it's sitting right here all right, so let's continue on. This is still a good row. It's still a little scary, though, because I don't know what could else could come out if I get a trouble card that's going to ruin everything I've got going on here. Uh, but at the same time, I don't have much going on in the first place. Um, I have one magnifying glass that can lead me to almost getting this, so that's why I'm tempted to go one more. Um, but if I... Oh, no, no, I got it. I got it. I can spend the dog. I can spend the dog, I'm sure someone saw this, in order to satisfy Brother's car to get me a compass, which then I can use along with the magnifying glass in order to pay for the discovery. Wow, that was a crazy run that I did not even see until just now. Giving me two more evidence cards, we got security footage and bite marks at the fairgrounds. It is now becoming a high priority that I move that old book, so I'm going to have to do a rest action next just to be able, even though it burns some time and I don't refresh any dice because I haven't used any in a bit, I need to move that card because if you can't place an evidence card, you flat out lose it. All right, I place security footage right here. Again, one of the icons matches for sure over here. And then on this side, we have an icon that matches right there. So this is a legal placement. The one thing to note is, as tempting as it was to place one of these cards potentially way over there, if I ever fill that top right-hand corner while the old book is still in there, you cannot change anything at that point. So you can accidentally lock yourself into a situation that you can't even get out of, which is pretty brutal. Uh, because once the column is satisfied, you read the adventure uh, book itself. But then when you do a 
move. You cannot ever move a card when you're doing one of these rest actions or regroup actions, but it says move a clue card. The only exception around that is if it's part of a column that's complete, you can't touch it. Now we're gonna be satisfying two columns here. We've got this one here, which is gonna be a two at the fairgrounds. And the next one is going to be four, five, six, seven at the fairgrounds. So we'll start with the two. The fortune teller, Celia suddenly stops walking and it takes a moment for the group to notice. What's the holdup? Asks Jayla, coming back to her friend, but Celia ignores her, eyes locked onto those of a dark figure in a glass box, a woman in shawls and jewels, an old animatronic, the kind that takes coins to print fortunes. Celia cannot help but to inch towards the box. Guys, help me here, says Jayla, but they do not respond. She sees they have fallen under its spell as well. Each walking forward, the animatronic begins to shift, hands passing over a deck of pictured cards. What is your fortune, my pretty? asks the thing in a robotic voice. It repeats itself. What is your fortune, my pretty? A few dancing lights trying to flicker on. I can tell you your fate, my dear. Come closer. Come closer. Jayla looks at her three friends, each approaching, each trapped in the white-eyed gaze of a broken contraption. Jayla knows she has to snap them out of the spell. Do we slap your, does she slap her friends until they snap out of the spell and we take a damage if we do this, or go grab something heavy to smash the glass and break the fortune teller and lose one time? I feel like in this situation and giving them a good slap, it sounds like the right thing to do. The Escape Tank. A small stage holds a glass tank full of dark water. It is covered in locks and chains. That's an escape tank, I think, says Celia, like Houdini would use on stage. Jack walks towards it, distracted by his reflection. He ruffles his hair and spins around. Imagine me doing some tricks like that, he says, striking a pose. The Amazing Jack. A hand slaps the inside of the glass, making Jack yelp and hit the ground. The hand presses, then beats against the glass, struggling. The water swirls and legs come into view, and the lid shakes against its locks. A face, barely visible, is just above the water surface, struggling to breathe. Someone's in there, exclaims Celia, running forward, grabbing at the chains and lashes. Not for long, says Jayla, brandishing an old pipe that was laying on the stage. Stand back. We can use the pipe to hit the lock until it opens. We lose a time if we do this, but we gain an ally card, or we can just decide to keep moving. Now this one has a little bit more of a moral choice here, and I feel a little bit better about helping this individual out. I am losing a little bit of time, which I don't necessarily like, so I'm down to seven, but I am gaining an ally. So which ally did we find in this tank? We found Donnie, and Donnie's gonna give us these two icons to use, so that's a plus. Now that we're done with the narratives and we know we need to move a clue card, I'm gonna go ahead right now, we're gonna do a rest action. So we're gonna move five dice from our spent area to our uh, free area. We haven't used any in a bit, so we're okay there. We can move a clue card and we also gain a health back. So that's a plus. So we're gonna go back up to a seven health total. Let's get that clue card, the old book, into a position that makes more sense. So this is the only position the old book can go into that makes any sense in terms of connecting to another adjacent symbol, right? If I was to place it down here, it actually wouldn't work as the light bulb wouldn't match the green icon over here. So that is the only space I could have moved it to. And again, I'm doing this because I know if I had to place it in the top right hand corner, which is another option, it would have put me in the same predicament I was having it here because the paw would be on this far left hand side. And then the paw over here is on the far right hand side. A card in the middle would need to have a paw on both sides or have one of the other symbols. It's just way too risky. All right, so let's continue searching through the fairgrounds. We need to find some more evidence, but we're getting close. We're getting close. We found some trouble to start. That's not good, uh, that's not good at all, really. Um, in terms of anything I can do around that card, not too much. Um, I could hide, but then I'm losing some more time, so that's sketchy. I could go one more card just to see. No, that was a bad decision, I shouldn't have done that. I, th I didn't think I'd get two troubles in a row, and so that is gonna force me to lose another time anyway, but now I have to deal with two of these cards. The portal, oh, you can see the ripple effects of this really starting to add up. So the FBI agent is here, we need to make conversation. All my allies have nothing that can help me with this. Uh, Marty can help me with this, so we are going to the dice on this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll two dice, seeing as we haven't been spending too many, and we'll see if we can pull this off. Yes, we're able to talk to the FBI agent and it's not an issue any longer. 
We got our, we, we got we able to talk away. Good thing because there's another time hit that would hurt. But now Portal is going to change us from our current world into the other side. And this is always bad. I never, never get a good feeling when I go into this side of the world because, well, it just gets aggressive really quick. Okay, so right at the gate there, we got darkness. We have to deal with that. I'm gonna go ahead and have Marty use his single symbol here to deal with that darkness. So that card can go and I'm not taking a health hit, thankfully. So that's good. Let's continue onwards through the fairgrounds on the other side. We got ourselves a portal, so a way out already. That's great. Next up, we got another portal. That's amazing. It only uses, this one only uses one magnifying glass, and I don't even have that. So I'm still searching. We got a discovery. Ooh, it's making me want to stick around a little bit longer now. Oh, so close. That could be perfect. We have the compass. We just need the magnifying glass. Really, a magnifying glass would. Oh, but we could get a trouble card here. We've got two bells. This is one of those situations where, you know, my mind is telling me to hide, but uh, the discovery card is, or even just getting out is so worth it. Let's risk it. Let's see how it goes. Okay, we got the mall. I was definitely expecting that to be a trouble card. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and move this over here. It says, draw three trouble cards. If one is the Charlotte card, it attacks you. Okay, so here we go. Evil Mr. Keating, nope. Rabid Dog, nope. And there it is, Charlotte at the very end, unreal. So it's gonna attack us. We need to have two of those icons as it's a green card in order to handle it. The other two cards go back into the deck. So can we deal with this is the question. I do have, actually I can do this, I can do this. I can use my ally Tex here for one of the icons and I'll use Marty's other token in order to deal with that. So nothing comes through in terms of damage. So I'm happy with that. That ally is gone. This is removed and we're not doing too bad, but Marty is now completely spent. So our whole team is exhausted from their abilities now. Because I have a couple ally cards that are good at fighting, I'm gonna risk seeing another card. I'm really, really not feeling good about this. Okay, darkness, not good. I need to see at least at least a magnifying glass to get out of here. So as of right now, the only way to satisfy this is I could do a roll or I could use Donnie and uh, and deal with it. Mm, I could roll. I haven't been rolling very often, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's roll two, and if I get lucky, I'll get at least a re-roll out of this too. Come on. Oh, I failed completely. So I am gonna take a health hit. Not good. And a, oh, that's too bad. I do get a re-roll though. These dice are spent. We'll go ahead and we'll use this die to track the fact we have one reroll ready for us later on. And that has been resolved and has hit us nicely. Do I want to continue? Yes, because I think I might want to get out of here. A clue, we got it. I think I can get out now. Yes, we can. So the question is, do we want to, or do I want to say the heck with it? Let's, no, let's not leave. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna discard this clue and this portal in order this is because I still have a portal here to use later to get this discovery, which is awesome. The compass and the uh, magnifying glass satisfy that. Two more evidence. Come on, we got to fill this board out before time expires. We got strange weather and tooth. At this point, the options are dwindling as to where I can place these cards. And this is what I mean. This is where things start getting really, really tough. So as you can see right now, I was able to get Tooth into this position, which is great because I had so many icons, the yellow ones match there, green ones match there. But this one, the strange weather would not work here as it doesn't match anything uh, in terms of these. And then up here, it doesn't match either. So I have to discard this evidence I just gained. This is getting a bit concerning. I don't like the fact that we're in a spot where we can start losing the uh, evidence that we gain. That's not good. All right, so should we get out of here? Probably. Um, we got dis another discovery that needs compasses. Um, yeah, let's keep going because we're safe for now. The dirt oh, wall, there we go, the darkness. Darkness always ensures we're not safe for long. So here we're gonna need to do some rolling because I have no, I have nothing that can prevent this. I do have a reroll though. So should I just use one die or two? Let's go two. Let's go to, we might need to regroup here too. This is gonna be, oh no, I failed it. So I actually do take the health hit, but I just gained two rerolls for a future roll. Now the thing is, I could use the one reroll that I already have to try to satisfy this. I could, 
I don't I have a choice. I'm gonna actually take the hit and just keep the rerolls. So I'm gonna tick myself up to a three. I'm gonna use these rerolls in the future to help me in a situation that's really nasty. But these dice are spent, and that darkness card hit me quite nicely. All right, let's continue our journey through. What's next? We got the cemetery. So the mole is now gone. Cemetery comes in. Draw three trouble cards. If one's the rabid dog, it's going to attack us. That's not good. Let's see what we get. Charlotte. There it is. Rabid dog. So Charlotte will go back into the deck in the middle. Rabid dog is coming after us. Thankfully, we have Donnie here who can help for one of the icons. I think I'm going to actually use him this time. Because um, it does hit our health, and our health is at 5 now. Um, and then I'm going to roll, I think. And I'm just going to roll 1. See if we get lucky. Because 10 leaves are 2 and 6 chance. Got it! Look at that! Ha! Ah, even better. So there we go. That is it. That's gone. The dog does not hurt us. Donnie is out of here. That's pretty good. What I might do before I draw the next card is I might discard one... Uh, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't discard one time. No. Probably wait till I do a refresh. Well, maybe that's a good. Maybe it's a good time to do a refresh on the dice. It could be, but also a regroup would be big too. So let's wait. Let's see if we can pull off a regroup at some point, based on the cards that come up. All right. So a trouble card. That's not good. That's not good at all. Um, let's see a clue. Okay. So what can we do with what we have here? I'm going to go ahead and discard this discovery card in order to get a single magnifying glass to satisfy the clue to give me one evidence. So it's not the best of that uh, situation, but it could be good. Oh, that's not what we need. For the spaces we're in, we need to see on this side, we need to see a red paw or a green icon or a yellow icon, and that is not going to work. So that is going to get discarded, unfortunately. Okay, so we're back to the trouble and the portal. Ah, oh, let's see. Maybe I should go... Yeah, let's try to aim to get out of the portal. So a discovery appears. Duh, does it give me the icons I need? No, it does not. Let's go one more. Okay, so can we get out with what we have right now? This portal here just needs a compass. Do I even have a compass? I don't. That's crazy. And then if I want to try to go this way, I need a compass and a magnifying glass. I might have to, you know what, to avoid taking hits now that most of my allies have been spent, I'm going to go ahead and hide. This is kind of, ri this is really where the game gets tense, is at the very end here, when you're trying not to take a lot of hits, and you're also trying to get that evidence to fit. Gets really sketchy, really fast. Okay, so neighborhood coming out. You may lose one time to take a re regroup action. That's actually what I want, and because regroup normally costs two, I'm doing that 100%. So we're gonna go down just by one. Regroup lets me bring all of my dice back. That honestly could not have worked out any better in terms of how things were timing wise. We got back to the neighborhood we originally started the game at. We got everybody back on their feet on my team, got some tokens back, got all of our dice back, got two health back, and we only need to pay one time to do it instead of two like normal. We're still in the, uh, the other side, which is not good. I'm trying to get out. But uh, there is chances we could find discoveries like this. Let's see what else we can find. Maybe a portal. Okay. Good, good. Continuing, we have the escape plan. All right, so now we've got potential options here. So I could take this escape plan. That is actually really good. Uh, let's do it. Let's spend this portal, which will allow us to take the escape plan, which goes into our hand. And then when we want, we can discard this card to either discard a trouble card from the, the row or ignore an event. So that could be really handy. Let's keep on going. Rescue ally. Ooh, this could allow us to uh, flip the deck. So if we can... Oh, we got it. We can get out. Let's do it. Let's just leave while we can. So I'm going to use the discovery for its uh, allied action to rescue an ally. And now we get to flip the deck. All right, things are looking up here. We could be on a roll to do something potentially good. And then, of course, when we come out of a portal, trouble arise right away. Do I want to hide or do I risk it? Let's risk it. Well, I have the escape plan. This is discard this card to either discard a trouble card from the row or ignore an event. So I could use it to get rid of the trouble card right away or I could just hide it away. I'll go one more. Lucky. Okay, now I, now I definitely don't want to sit around any longer. I'm going to end up hiding, I think. 
Yeah, there's no way. Let's just hide. So I'm going to take the time down to three. This is really sketchy. This is the exact same feeling uh, that I had last time when I played this um, in terms of just the tenseness of what's going on in this game. It's, uh, it's always going to mess with you. When you get down to that, uh, it has a really nice balance where it gets down to the end where you feel like you're going to get enough evidence to figure out what monster you have to go up against. And it gets, it just gets crazy tense. So we're getting rid of all that stuff. We're down to three time left. This is super tense. Uh, discovery card. Okay, that's good. That's a really good start. The old manor is next. So the neighborhood is gone. Old manor's in. You may discard any card from the row. I do not want to discard anything because I have a discovery card. And there we go. We got a little bird's eye view of the clue. So we need compasses. Oh, that's awesome. Um, we just need one more magnifying glass. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use Celia right now. I'm going to use her to exhaust for a magnifying glass. Use this to discard two magnifying glasses. Satisfies. We get two evidence. Just like that. Come on. Yes! We got a light bulb on the left side. Can we get another one? No! So close. So one of them will be able to fill. And then on the bottom... Oh, actually, no, this will work. This will work. Checking out the evidence board, you can see that there are two slots remaining. One has the light bulb at the top, and then the other one down below has a paw, and that lines up with the two cards I have. And look at that! We got the evidence board completely filled out. It was all about a missing child carton and a lab report that did it in. And now we're going to go ahead and total up this right-hand side. We have a 4, a 2, and a 3. So that's going to be a total of 9. And instead of going to the location we're in, which is the old manor, we're going to go take a look at the boss area of the adventure book. The Hobnoblins, a metal sound, a chittering in the air, but so far away, the smell of sweat. Everyone freezes waiting for the beast to reveal itself. Something green and small crawls out from beneath a small newspaper. It has huge eyes, long ears, and skin covered with blisters. It clutches a bit of cloth around its body as it stumbles forward, collapsing in front of Jayla, who poses ready to strike. What is that? Some weird little elf? Asked Jack, standing beside her. She prods it with her shoe, so it rolls over. Oh, nasty, continues Jack. Look at the fingernails. Where are the nail clippers when you need them? A blur and a scream come in quick succession. The thing springs up and exposes row upon row of angled yellow teeth, sinking a bite into Jayla's shoe. She kicks it back, barely unharmed striking it in the lip where it spurts dark red blood. It growls and scuttles back behind a trash can. I... I have never seen anything like that before, says Celia. Maybe it won't come back. She expects she is wrong, and her dread turns to fear as her eyes appear everywhere. Under a loose newspaper, in a gutter, behind a post, in an alley, the eyes all blink and stare in unison, and the light catches their teeth. An army of creatures, each hungry, each ready to bite. The Hobdoblins have arrived at the old manor. We're up for a boss battle, so what do we do? Well, to defeat the boss monster, we need to roll dice and or discard cards and tokens to match the icons on the boss monster card. The one thing to note around this prototype though, is that the way these are structured along the bottom for the Hobnoblins is not accurate as of the rule book. And in the rule book, how this is actually pictured is these two are connected together, these two are connected together, and these two are connected together. So in other words, you need to have a total of three rounds worth of icon filling in order to take them down. You can't just unload the cannons with your dice, rolling five dice, throwing all your allies at it, throwing everything Marty's got for tokens at it, and trying to just fill it all up to win. You have to do it in three rounds, which means you need time to do it. But they're obviously hitting you. On the other side of things, too, when you start this battle, every single round, the Hobnoblins are going to grab one of your dice and burn it, essentially. So basically, to start off this battle, one die goes in the pool. That die is now considered locked in and will be exhausted later on. So again, I can go after these two right here, these two, or these two. And it doesn't matter how I satisfy any of those two, except for the middle one, which is also missing a symbol, which means that the gear symbol needs to be placed in first before the fist. So just remember that this one is needing some changes and will be changed in the final version to match the rule book. But as of right now, what I'm going to 
going to do is try to make this happen. So I'm going to go ahead with Bubba and I'm going to use this one, which gives me two of the fists, which will match these two right here that are connected. Again, it doesn't show the connection, but that satisfies this like so. So those are out of the way, but that's as much as I can do. If I roll dice right now, I'm literally just burning dice because, again, I can only satisfy one of these three sets each round. So I can't roll any dice, or I could, I could surely go ahead and roll them, but they're just going to get burnt. So no, no reason to do that. So we're done now. We'll take this and exhaust it. This card stays here. The hobgoblins, or I should say the hobnoblins, are going to hit us for two time, dropping us from three down to one. The only thing I can do to salvage time right now is I'm going to spend... J I'm going to use Jayla's card to move the time cube back a space. This isn't really going to help me too much because I'm still going to go off the board at the end of the next round, but we're going to keep on going here. So the next thing I'm going to do is use Marty, and of course I have to lock another die going into this next round. Marty's going to use his tokens, and he'll do this in order, because as I mentioned, this pairing right here needed to be done in order. This one first, and then this one. So just like that, I've satisfied two of the three groupings, but I have to end right there because I can't go any further. This gets spent, and then they hit me for two time, one and two off the track. Ladies and gentlemen, that is how you lose the game in the final round of the battle. It's pretty crazy that it came right down to just having some extra time, meaning that some of my choices that I made earlier in the game actually affected how this panned out. If I had been a little bit smarter with my time, potentially, maybe around some of the narrative choices or around potential rests that I did or anything else that involved using up time, uh, if I had kept a little bit more, I would have been able to take down this boss. But that is what this game gives you is those kind of edge of your seat moments when it comes right down to the wire and of course you can always adjust the difficulty on your own by either removing a number of dice so you don't have as many dice or starting with less health or starting with less time to ramp up the difficulty even more and just to show you an example of what the groupings of the dice would make sense to look like on this Hob uh, Noblin's card if it was in fact sharing this as all black right here or this one as being all black here's an example of what other ones look like. For instance, the Spectre, you can see it's all grouped together like this. This is telling you that you'd be able to do these in two rounds, but you have to put them in order when you actually put them in. So again, every single boss in the game is gonna be different. So again, the Hobnoblin should have had black, black, and black. And then there should have been one of these white arrows right in the center there for this middle pairing. And that, my friends, is going to wrap up the setup and playthrough for Hunted Woad Ridge, currently on Kickstarter. I really hope this helps you make an informed decision on the game. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, keep on rolling solo.